lots of evidence of uh, what we call workman's hat in here. You can see on the edge here. But, uh, there's the wadi that we investigated last week. second body which I don't know if you can make out but right there in the distance is the uh, the aperture in the cliff face which leads to the tomb of Hapshatsut and then if I come pan around a little bit here you can't make it out but just here on the cliff face directly in front of us uh, is the tomb that uh, was designated as Nefru which is the daughter of Apshatsut. Um, that's the one that Howard described. Um, then we have just beyond, just behind this one here, the second body that we investigated last week, which unfortunately was uh, empty, but uh, did yield all those symbols, uh, especially the large ank, the two owls, the two eagles, the staircase with the face next to it, with the the satellite and the square with the three star-like figures. Um, if you carry around that leads to the second main, third main tomb, which was right here in itself. And this outcrop here is where we've got the symbols of the spaceship and uh, the mutt. It's quite desolate up here, um, but as I said, it's quite a lot of this activity as you can see here. These mounds, these what are referred to as workman huts. Um, but uh, I, I, I'm not convinced with this this terminology, to be honest with you, because of the there's no configuration of stones. You know, the stones haven't been laid in a particular manner. There's no other human interference taking place. So I, I really don't know what to make. See, that's the part I really want to get to now is, is this these outcrops and go along this ledge. One there, two, three, then going on in is four. That will probably give me access around as well. And uh, I think we'll find a lot of evidence. I mean, we can see a lot of the piles of chippings around the edging, around the bases there, which would denote some kind of structure, possibly tomb like. Now, on the way up, we did pass quite a few. We passed the main structure, which we'll do on the way back down to the horses, and uh, we'll take it from there. So, uh, I'm going to continue walking along here, and again, I apologise for the wind, and uh, see what uh, comes up. Uh, catch up with you in uh, a couple of minutes' time. Walking along here, as you can see, this where it's bevelled out, bowed out here from water erosion and as we come along. We've got two structures with the stone stacked on top of each other to form two adjacent rooms. There's a pathway going along here, but uh, I'd suggest that the roof probably came over the top to provide shelter. No other evidence of anything else here. We did find a cop some copstick pottery over on down. Yes, Maria. So, here we are then, guys. So, just I'm going to be careful here, as you can see. Shit dropped down. But uh, over on down there is where the Kinesa was the other day. And if you remember, that's where I was, where I mentioned about the foxes, and then I climbed back up to Maria and Mohammed, who were where the symbols just around the corner. So here we can get a really good view of the plateau, which we're going to do next week. And then we're going to get back onto that plateau and go around. What we do is we'll probably leave the horses at the bottom of the wadi somewhere in some nice shade. If I come around though, this gives you a good idea of the wadi that we're going we're gonna to get into today. So we're going to go back, back down the wadi that we came from, circumnavigate it, and then come up this S bend here. And instead of taking the left-hand turn, we're going to take the right-hand turn. And Howard did actually mention that this was pretty free of debris, and it looks pretty clean from up here. But of course, when you get down there, it's a totally different picture. But uh, just up here, I don't know if you can make it out, but can you see the white symbols that are painted 
outside the tombs. Now, Howard's already documented those tombs there, so uh, it'd be interesting to see if there's been any interference since his documentation. Um, but I'm interested in getting uh, some stills and some video footage for you of the, uh, the symbolism that's been painted on the outside, which is uh, the same symbolism, of course, as we had in this wadi. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Reminds me of that film, the Star Trek part where they had that, that mountain in it. That's a totally different story. There's Mohammed and Maria taking a rest before we walk back down again. But there's the Nile Valley and all its glory. Over there in the distance, they're burning the uh, sugarcane fields. But you can see how far it stretches, and that's our Mont right over in the distance. Right far away over there. Yeah. So this is, uh, you can just make out the last bumps here of the lake of Amenophis III. That was the boundary. And then, unfortunately, the camera's not going to pick it up, but just a little bit way on from that, well, actually, if you count the pylons, one, two, the, in between the second and the third pylon uh, is Deir el Shawit, uh, with its alignment going towards Karga, actually, Dush, in fact. And uh, it's then going on to Medamud and Karnak, which is way over there in the distance. But uh, quite beautiful from up here, and it's still there, as I say. The sun's not too bad, actually. It's uh, cooler than I thought, but uh, we're going to head back down now. And uh, on the way down, as I said, we'll we get that structure that we passed, and uh, I'll film that for you and uh, talk you through that and uh, take it from there. Okay. By the way, while I've got you, uh, if there's anybody out there who's watching these, it feels like they uh, they wish to participate or sponsor us, then uh, please do contact us and let us know. Um, both me and Maria are always looking out for sponsors. Um, unfortunately, uh, with the economic climate, our sponsors have dried up somewhat, so uh, this is taking all of our money now. But uh, you can see the results. It's quite beautiful. So, uh, anyway, I'll speak to you soon. Take care.